let's talk about the elephant in the room. PvP in MMOs. It's a topic that always sparks debate, divides communities, and has a history littered with failed games. We've all seen it. Players clamor for PvP, claiming they love the thrill of combat, the strategic depth, the social dynamics, but then so many PvP-focused MMOs fizzle out, leaving behind ghost towns and broken promises. Why? Well, if you've been part of those communities, you know the reasons. Maybe it was the lack of content, the stale gameplay loops, the pay-to-win mechanics, or just plain boredom. Whatever the cause, you and countless others moved on, and the game died a slow, painful death. Let's face it, PvP in many MMOs feels like an afterthought. It's just a tacked-on feature, a way to appease a portion of the player base without really thinking about the consequences. The result? One-sided ganks in the open world, a frustrating divide between the hunters and the hunted, and a whole lot of resentment. It's not that PvP is inherently bad, it's just that the old model is outdated. We've seen this before in other genres, like FPS games. Remember when it was all about running around just shooting everyone in sight? Fun for a while, sure, but it got stale. That's why the FPS games evolved. They introduced objectives, different game modes, and eventually the massive thrill of battle royales, where risk and reward are baked into the very core of the experience. MMOs need that same kind of innovation. We need to move beyond the gank just because mentality and create PvP experiences that are meaningful, rewarding, and engaging for everyone involved. And that's exactly what Ashes of Creation is trying to do. They're not just throwing in some PvP zones and calling it a day. They're building a world where PvP is a core part of the experience, woven into the fabric of the game's systems and mechanics. It's about more than just killing other players. It's about massive castle sieges where guilds clash for control of territory. It's about naval battles where fleets vie for dominance on the high seas. It's about open world conflicts with real stakes where your actions have a direct impact on the world around you. It's about creating a PvP environment where everyone feels like they have a role to play, where every victory is hard earned, where even defeat can be a valuable learning experience. This is the kind of PvP that can unite a community, not divide it. It's the evolution the genre needs, and it's something to be truly excited about. Intrepid is not just building another PvP MMO, they're rebuilding the entire PvP experience on the bones of those that came before. They're learning from the mistakes, the failures, and the missed opportunities. They're listening to the community, incorporating feedback, and constantly iterating on their systems to create something truly meaningful and lasting. So you might be asking, what makes Ashes of Creation's PvP any different? Well, it starts with a system called Corruption, and trust me, this isn't your average PvP flag. Forget about turning PvP on and off whenever you feel like it. In Ashes of Creation, you're always vulnerable. But before you panic, there's a catch. The game doesn't reward random acts of aggression. It punishes them. Let's say you decide to gank an unsuspecting player who's just trying to mind their business. Sure, you might get the drop on them, but you'll pay dearly for it. The corruption system kicks in and your character will become tainted. This isn't just some cosmetic change. It's a full-on debuff. Your stats will suffer, making you weaker in PvP. You'll also lose the access to safe havens, and you'll become a target for NPC guards and bounty hunters. Oh, and don't forget the risk of losing valuable items upon death. So you might get a few cheap kills early on, but trust me, the thrill will wear off quickly once the consequences start piling up. And that's where the true brilliance of this system shines. It creates a natural balance between risk and reward. It forces players to think strategically about when and why they engage in PvP. And here's the kicker, this ties directly into the crafting system. In Ashes of Creation, the best gear isn't found in dungeons or raids, it's crafted. And crafting requires rare materials, the kind you'll find in those contested hunting grounds. Suddenly, open world PvP isn't just about senseless killing, it's about securing those vital resources, protecting your guild's interests, and maybe even establishing dominance over a region. So yeah, you can absolutely challenge that player who's hogging all the good stuff, but you better be prepared for the consequences, because in Ashes of Creation, every action has a reaction, and the price of aggression can be steep. But these resources aren't just a means to an end, they're the lifeblood of the world. They fuel your node's progression, unlock new technologies, and empower your characters, but they're not just yours for the taking. Rival nodes will be constantly vying for the same resources, creating a tense competition that can escalate into all-out war. If you neglect to defend your territory or secure new resources, you risk falling behind, your progress stifled by the enemy's growing power. But the developers aren't just leaving you to fend for yourselves in the open world. They've created structured PvP events that provide a controlled, 
yet thrilling environment for conflict. One such event is the caravan system. Imagine a convoy of wagons loaded with valuable goods and guarded by mercenary players. These caravans travel between nodes, offering a tempting target for those seeking to disrupt their rival's progress. Gathering your guildmates, you can ambush the caravan, engaging in a fierce battle with its defenders and claim its precious cargo for yourself. Of course, the risk is high, but so is the reward. And then there are the node wars, epic clashes between rival nodes for control of territory. These aren't just skirmishes, they're full-scale battles, complete with objectives, strategic maneuvers, and the potential for massive swings in power. A successful node war can mean more than just bragging rights. It can turn enemy-owned hunting grounds into your own, giving you access to their wealth of experience and materials. It can disrupt their supply chains, cripple their economy, and pave the way for further conquests. But remember, these events are corruption-free, so even if you lose, you won't face the harsh penalties associated with unsanctioned PvP. It's a chance for you to test your mettle, own your skills, and contribute to your node's future without risking the wrath of the corruption system. But beyond territory and resource control, PvP is the catalyst for shaping the very world itself. As nodes level up through player progress, they'll start to lock out neighboring nodes from reaching their full potential. Think of it like a race, but the prize isn't just resources for territory, it's access to a whole new world of content. Each node stage, from 1 to 6, brings a wealth of new quests, resources, dungeons, and even raids. But here's the twist, there's a cap on how many high-level nodes can exist at once. This means that if you want to unlock the hidden content within a new node, you have to destroy an existing one. That's where node sieges come in. These are massive, epic battles where entire cities clash for the fate of a node. And when I say massive, I mean it. At the moment, there are no player cap on these sieges. Imagine hundreds, maybe even thousands of players fighting tooth and nail for their home, defending every inch of ground. The stakes are incredibly high and the outcome is never certain. But remember, the defenders won't go down without a fight. They've poured their blood, sweat, and tears into building their node, and they'll do everything in their power to protect it. This means strategic planning, cunning tactics, and unwavering courage on both sides. If the attackers succeed, they'll get to watch as their enemy's node crumbles to dust, opening the way for their own node to rise from the ashes. But if they fail, they'll be left to lick their wounds and regroup, while the defenders celebrate their hard-fought victory. The cost of these sieges is great, but if you win, you'll have access to that entire node's player storage. Either way, one side will be at great loss. This is the kind of PvP that goes beyond simple skirmishes. It's a battle for the future, a struggle for survival, and the test of everything you and your community have built together. It's the kind of conflict that creates legends, forges lifelong friendships, and leaves an indelible mark on the world of Vera. This kind of dynamic strategic PvP elevates Ashes of Creation beyond the typical gank fest. It's a system that rewards teamwork, strategic thinking, and a deep understanding of the world's interconnected systems. And it's a testament to the developer's commitment to creating a truly meaningful and engaging PvP experience. This is PvP with purpose, with consequence, with a sense of history and legacy. It's a gamble, sure, but it's a gamble that might just pay off, revitalizing a genre that's been starving for innovation. And for those of us who crave the thrill of competition, that rush of adrenaline, and the camaraderie of a shared struggle, it's a gamble worth taking. <laughs>